Welcome dear students I am professor Ronika Yusuf Dear friends the topic which we are going to discuss today is skeletal elements in spawns Spicules are the skeletal elements of the spawns and are also called sicklerites These are microscopic crystalline bodies and are generally formed of either simple spines or of spiny rays radiating from a common point these are secreted by special amebocytes of mesoglea which are called scleroblasts derived from the archaeocytes all the spicules have an axial core of organic matter surrounded by a number of layers of inorganic substance so on the basis of inorganic material laid spicules are of two types calcareous spicules and siliceous spicules let us first discuss about the calcareous spicules in these spicules in organic cover is formed of calcium carbonate these are secreted by mesenchymal cells called calcoblasts and are found in members of class calcarea chemically each calcareous spicule is formed of calcium carbonate 87% magnesium carbonate 7% water 3% and some small quantities of other minerals an axial thread of organic material which is known as spicule now the second type on the basis of the material inorganic material laid is siliceous spicule in these spicules in organic cover is formed of salicylic acids these are secreted by scleroblast of mesoglea and are found in members of class like hexactinellida and desmospongia chemically each siliceous spicule is formed of silicon dioxide 86% water 9% and other mineral elements for example sodium potassium iron chlorine which makes 3% and an axial thread of organic material which is known as spicule now on the basis of their size spicules are of two types megasicularis and microsicularis megasicularis are large size spicules measuring from 60 to 2000 micrometers and form the main supporting framework of spores these are present near the dermal layer and in the wall of the sponge sea all the calcareous spicules and certain siliceous spicules are megasicularis then number second is microsicularis these are small sized spicules measuring from 10 to 60 micrometers and are distributed throughout the mesoglea and cortical region they are not a part of main supportive framework on the basis of their shape the spicules are of six types the spicules are named after their axis and rays these six types are monoexon spicules triexon spicules tetraexon spicules polyexon spicules spheres and desmos let us first discuss about the monoexon spicules these have single axis so or rod or needle shaped which may be straight or curved their ends may be pointed not or hooked these may be calcareous or siliceous and commonly project from the sponge surface giving a bristle appearance while in osculum these form an ossicular fringe monoexon spicules are developed due to growth in one or both directions on the basis of which monoexon spicules are of two types the first one is monoactinal spicules these are also called style and are developed due to unidirectional growth so spicules have two dissimilar ends generally a style has inner pointed 
end and outer rounded end. Usually, the pointed end of styles projects to the exterior, but these may be modified to form tylo style and acantho style. Tylo style is a style with inner pointed end and outer knobbed end, while as acantho style, it is a style covered with spines. Diactinal spicules, these are also called diactine or rafts and are developed due to uniform growth in both directions, so have similar ends. These are further of following types on the basis of their ends. Number 1. Auxia A wrapped with both pointed ends. Number 2. Tor node A wrapped with both spear-shaped ends. Number 3. Strong aisle A wrapped having both rounded ends. And number 4. Tylot a wrapped having both knobbed ends. When axia and strong guile, diactinal spicules are covered with spines, then these are called acanthoaxia and acantho strong guile respectively. Some of the spots have special curved diactinal microsclerus. These may be curved in one plane or spi spirally coiled. So these are the following types. The first one is sigmas. These are C-shaped spicules and curved axis in one plane only. Number second, in toxus. These are depressed in the center to form bow-shaped spicules. Number third is chalus. These have uh, recurved hooks or plates at the end. These are called isochalus when have similar ends or an isochalus when have dissimilar ends. Number four, sigmosphere. These are spirally called sigmos. Dear friends, let us now discuss about the triaxon spicules. These are characteristic spicule of members of class hexactinalida and are six rayed, so are also called hexactinal spicules. A triaxon spicule is laid down along three axes, crossing at right angles to each other, which meet at center point. These may be modified differently to form the following types of the spicules. Number first, pentactin spicules. These are formed by a loss of one ray. Stroactin spicules. These are formed by the loss of the entire axis. And a common modification is elongation of one axis to give a sword-like appearance. When elongated ray is covered by a spine, then it is called the mule. On the basis of the shape of the spicule, the third type is tetraexone spicules. These are also called triactin or quadrate spicules and are laid along four radii radiating from the central point at equal angle. So, in a typical tetraactin spicule, three rays will appear to meet at an angle of 120 degree. Triaxon spicule are also called calathrops or trienes. The longer arm of a triene is called rhabdome, while shorter arm are called clads or cladi, which together form the cladome. Now, trienes occur in several forms on the basis of their cladi. The first one is anatriene, when cladi are directed downwards. Number second is protriene, when cladi are directed upwards. Number third is orthotriene, when cladi are directed horizontally. And the fourth one is decoterene, when cladi are forked shaped. Polyaxone spicules. These have many equal sized axes radiating from a common center. These are most common among microsclerus. These are commonly found in the glass pots. Due to their star-like appearance, these are also called as esters. On the basis of the nature of center and rays, esters are of two types. Small centered esters and large centered esters. Small center esters have long size ray, 
radiating from a small center. On the basis of their ray, these are of three types. First, ox asters having pointed rays. Number second, strong ally asters having blunt rays. And number third, dial asters having knobbed rays. The another type is large centered asters. These have small size ray arising from a large center. So on the basis of their ray, these are of two types. Sapphire asters having distinct rays. And another one is stair asters having indistinct rays. Let's move to the another type which is called sapphires. These spicules are rounded and are formed by concentric growth around the common center. Now the last one is desmos. These are the special type of megacyclar spicules found in a number of spots. These are developed by an irregular deposition of silica on the original monoaxon, triradiate or tetraaxon spicules and are commonly called cripoids. On the basis of shape of original spicule, these are a following type. The first one is monocripoid formed by deposition of silica on monoaxon spicules. Number second is tricripides, formed by deposition of silica on tetrarated spicules. Number third is tetracripoid, formed by deposition of silica on tetraradiate spicules. The desmos are usually united to form a right, uh, reticulated skeleton called lithiostat. That was all for today. Stay tuned and don't miss out our next video on sponge and fibers. This is Professor Ronika Yusuf signing off.